Welcome to another episode of Six Picks Music Club, a music podcast for people who don't really smoke weed anymore. They eat it. What's up, what's up, listener? Welcome back to another episode of Six Picks Music Club, the music podcast where we pick six songs that connect to the episode's topic. I'm Dave, and with me leading you through our audio adventure are my two brothers from Other Mothers. To my right is the Duke of the Dirt Track, the B-Boy from the Bayou, Professor Jeffro. What an intro. <laughs> and to my left is the punk from Padre Island, the man with the plan, oh, reliable Russ. Hey, hey. <laughs> but before we do anything, we gotta get the clubhouse secret entrance opened up. What's our password this week, Frodo? It's Vesectamundo. <laughs> <laughs> Abra frickin' Cadabra, man. Look at that. Came right open. Came right open. Everybody inside. But Jeffro, you were telling us kind of in our in our pre-show that uh you had some medical procedures this last week. Is that something you want to share with listener? I don't know what the HIPAA laws are up in Toronto. Yeah, guys, I got snipped and clipped last week. Like you got a, a shave? You got a Beard trim? I got vasected. <laughs> Welcome to the club. And uh, I walked in, and I was like, let's vasect, guys. Let's do it. And they just, <laughs> and it was just like a middle-aged woman, and she was just like, I hate this. I hate everything about this. <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect. I cracked wise with the other dudes that were, they were like, there was one guy that was probably 60 years old going to see the urologist and another kind of middle-aged dude. They were just sitting in their gowns with their shoes on. They made us keep our shoes on for some reason. So I had my like Nikes and a gown with undies on. And then this other guy. You're this, all in um, gowns in the waiting room together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Canadian healthcare is so weird, man. It's like, you don't have to pay for it, but you're not going to really like it. <laughs> But you're going to share a room every time. <laughs> One guy had like some work boots on. Another guy had had like black socks with with like black dress shoes and a gown. And I was like, this is that's so funny. <laughs> and so I was like, it's a good look, boys. When I walked in and they both looked at me and they were just like, God like, damn it. And, <laughs> why are you talking to me right now? <laughs> and then I got I got called up. The nurse, she's kind of like the fluffer. The vasectomy fluffer. This is probably the most attention that my genitals have gotten in one sitting. <laughs> like just like an, an extreme amount of attention. You know, I've just like I've never been a part of a milking video, but this that must be what it's like. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> she was like, "Okay, so you take your underwear off, leave the gown on, lay on the table on your back. And then as I was laying down on the table, I asked some awkward question like, how much do you think that light costs? Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just like this really extravagant bright light, like from a UFO. She just goes, I don't know, probably $50,000. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's probably about right. <laughs> and so she just kind of answered it. So then she she pulls back the gown. And so then you're just exposed. And then she goes, I'm going to clean the area first. And you're like, the area? Okay. Uh, I took a shower been... this morning. <laughs> yeah. But I was also thinking about, like, what if your sex partner referred to it as the area? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> um, I'm um... going to address the area, and I'll be back up for hard banging later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, babe, can you blow the area, please? <laughs> <laughs> so she does address the area she cleans it with that like orange like the most clean stuff imaginable but it's orange fabuloso it's fabuloso <laughs> actually that's purple i think it's back teen or something so she she administers that and then there's like a series of sheets i guess to catch blood but they're like all arranged and basically you just feel like your junk is sticking out through a glory hole of sheets and papers. So then dude comes out, the urologist, and he's almost movie level relaxed. So he's like, hey, man, what's up? How's it going? And you're like, nothing much, Doc. How are you? And he's like, did you catch any of that eclipse? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, actually, I got the first quarter of it before too much cloud cover. He was like, oh, man, I just didn't even get a chance, you know, because I was in here 
working all day. But I'm just so fascinated by that. Do you like sci-fi? Like he was like he was like that kind of a dude. Like he was chatting <laughs> me up. And I was like, Yeah, I get I mean, I don't like a lot of sci-fi, but one that's pertinent here is Danny Boyle's Sunshine. Big <laughs> fan of that movie. Have you ever seen that? And he's like he's like, No, let's talk about it while we get in here. And then he just like started into the thing. <laughs> and I was like, excellent segue. <laughs> This urologist really knows what's up. <laughs> so then I was like, how many of these have you done out of curiosity? And he was like, I don't know, man, 200 for a year for 25, 5,000. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> then he was like, you know, it's the least invasive version that we do. We don't cut you open or anything like that. And I was like, I just don't. Okay. I, I believe you, but I just don't understand how you do that. And then he uh, reminded me that my left vas is is small and narrow, which did feel a little emasculating, but apparently it doesn't matter. I've still made children. <laughs> it's funny because like mine was different than that. They did not say it was too thin. They said it was, in fact, too beefy, <laughs> too thick, my vas. And so I didn't get to be part of any of it. I didn't get to talk about sunshine or, you know, tell jokes or do bits because they put me under. I think what happened is when... Your vas turned about 25 to 30. It went through a difficult first marriage and started drinking too much beer. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe in between marriages after the divorce, you know, it was like single living and hit the chef Boyardee pretty hard and just got real thick (laughs) down there. I didn't get a general anesthesia. It's just a local anesthesia. And he was like, listen, I'm going to give you anesthesia, but you're still going to feel touch. (laughs) And I was like, what? That was the part that really stood out. It was almost like the same sensation that I get when a pilot comes on and says, we're going to hit a little bit of chop on the descent. (laughs) It was like one of those where you're like, I'm going to feel everything and it's going to be really uncomfortable. Cool. How does he do it, though? Does he go in with, like, a crochet hook and, like, pull your vas out and then snip it and push it back? or like? Yeah, so that's what I can't figure out because when I had a Band-Aid, he was like, leave this Band-Aid on for two days, all right, before you pull it off. And then and so then I, I, after two days, I did pull it off, and I had, like, all that. It was, like, a real sticky Band-Aid, so I just had all that Band-Aid gunk all up on my <laughs> junk. And so I had to spend, like an excessive amount of time kind of scraping that off in the shower, which was not a great feeling. But yeah, when I got the Band-Aid off, it's just two little holes, like a mouse vampire (laughs) got me right at the bottom of my shaft is what it looks like. And so I was like, "What? how did he do it? And so, yeah, he just stuck crochet needles down there. It was like cutting it, sealing it up, and then pulling them out. Feel good about it. So I had to uncomfortably ask him about, like, I was like, do I also need to wait a week to, you know, that's the way I said it, to, you know, uh... (laughs) Just leave the pause. And he just goes like, I don't, what, uh, oh, ejaculate? (laughs) And I was like, yeah. And he goes, I don't really make any rules about that one. Like, just do whatever feels right. (laughs) And I was like, cool, cool. (laughs) (laughs) I waited like three days to see... How it's doing down there is fine. Yeah, it did not hurt at all. So either I'm just a real pro, which is totally possible. With that skinny vase, there wasn't a lot going through there anyway. Yeah, exactly. Effective, but not copious, I guess. Do you think vase diameter is associated with how far you can shoot? I'm not a distance shooter at all. Never have been. Yeah. I mean, it's like... It just kind of oozes out of you. It's not oozing. No, it's not oozing. It's just like pussing out. (laughs) Gross. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, guys, I got to tell you, I am pumped for the show today. Just to let you in on the deeds, listener, this week's six picks come from a prompt that was inspired by a comment Fro made back on the Funeral Songs app. So, like, when he was talking about the P.J. Harvey track, The River, and I said, that song's too sexy for a funeral, and everyone would be banging in the pews, that type of thing. So, this topic is centered around songs that F, songs that bang, or fuck, as they they say in the low places. Russ, are you going to kick us off tonight? Yeah, I'm going to start. Cool. Well, Mike, to you, my friend. Take us away. My song... 
that loves, I'll say. It's called Avalanche by the Canadian band Winter Sleep off their 2003 debut self-titled album. The tale of Winter Sleep starts off as a progressive rock band named Carrie. They released two albums and then frontman Paul Murphy decided he wanted to explore the softer side of things. So he and a few members of the band started Winter Sleep. And to break away from the carry sound, they went straight acoustic guitar on that first record. And they have won Juno. The Juno Award? Yep, yep. They won one in 2008. They're formed in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Great oysters up there. What accent is that? I don't know. It's just... <laughs> It's like Boston? I think it was like Eastern. Boston mixed with New York somehow. Definitely <laughs> Northeast <not> Halifax. <laughs> Completely other side. <laughs> Sorry, Halifax. So they're from Halifax? You're saying So you fuck to it or like what about the fucking? Yeah, I'm I'm about to I'm just getting I'm getting past you get like hot when you listen to like when you win Juno Awards. Like what's <laughs> you're like, hey babe, let's watch the Juno Awards together and then we'll bang it out to the winner. <laughs> feels like in a Twilight film, it's like how the vampires would be pale and look at each other. <laughs> okay, so I do. I get the looking as well, right? Um, it does feel like that. That makes sense. Okay, because I was going to say, I picture a scene in a movie unfolding like during the song, right? I mean, I feel like it's you've got the two it's stars. It's got rain in it. It's that, raining. And they're just like staring at each other lovingly. You got like the nice tungsten soft light illuminating the scene, you know, and then the, the kissing slowly moves talking. in. The kissing slowly moves yeah. into like, you know, a, like a beautiful love scene, mm -hmm. if you will. And then mm -hmm. like it's almost perfect. But what makes this work for me, I think more than anything else, is the last line of the chorus after he's kind of describing, you know, I taste your skin, breathe your scent, whatever it is. And then he says, I taste your satin sentiment, right? And then it's like, all is not right. Yeah, it goes from skin to sin. Yeah. So beneath the surface yeah. are cracks. And, you know, this song, which sounds like it could be a lovemaking song, the layers are now redefined. It's raw. It's authentic. <laughs> it's it's vulnerable. vulnerable. And honest, I think. <laughs> It's the Rav. Yeah, that's it, man. So I'm a broken record. The Russ Rav. So which of your children did you conceive to this this song? So I guess I didn't pick a song that I banged to. I didn't pick any song that I banged to. I picked songs about <laughs> banging or made me think about banging or what would be good for banging, yeah. but I didn't. I think provoking the bang, as Jeffro eloquently stated. I think you guys should try it out, dude. You, Yeah, you guys should try it. Next time it's raining or just turn on the sprinkler. Yeah. Go stand in the backyard. Just give it a Alexa, play Avalanche. <laughs> I get what you're saying at the end, though, because it's like it does feel like, you know, they come together and they're, the rain is happening. They're taking off each other's shirts. And then, like, in slow-mo in the background, like, a car swerves around the corner. And then they open up with machine guns and just get gunned down in the middle of the street in the rain. I think that's the scene in them. Or it's... Maybe not getting gunned down, but somebody is showing up or something has happened. I feel like it evokes a pretty specific image. It's one of the songs that I was thinking of that just I, I got a clear picture of like where I thought was going and like how it could be very inspirational to let's just write a scene or build a story around this one, really just like that one line. Cool, Russ. Well, thanks so much. Jeffro, I think you should be our number two here. What do you got for us tonight? I actually did something a little bit different process wise, which is I went to the fans, guys. I asked our fans oh. what songs bang for them. But I also kind of wanted the feminine perspective because all the songs I was coming up with were just pounders. Okay. And I was like, no, I need something that gives lady boners out there. You know? Right, right. What gets your clit dick hard? So the song that she recommended I'd never heard before, FKA Twigs's Two Weeks, and man, does this song bang. This is a seducer. This is a seductive song, and it's a woman that's going after the guy that's dating somebody else. Universally, I like those songs. There's something about that, like, Destiny's Child, 
you know, she's saying, ladies, leave your man at home. Oh, can I tell you what my favorite line is? Yeah. Is I can fuck you better than her. What's even better, Russ? I agree. That's a great line. It's in parentheses. Oh, I know. It's like it's in the background singing. But it's in parentheses. So you're <laughs> saying, I'm saying all this other stuff, but in parentheses back here is I'm, tell- I'm telling you that I can fuck you better than her, you know, and I can make you forget about her. Other things I love about this. I hate the way that I say motherfucker. I can't say it right. I can't say it the the way that I want it to sound. Yes. It sounds like a surfer saying it when I say it. It's like motherfucker is what it sounds like. Um, but when she says it or sings it, it's like it's the best way. So whatever way she does it is the way that I wish I could do it, but I cannot do it that way. I can't say motherfucker like she does. Anyway greatness but some of the other great lines get your mouth open your high greatness feel your body closing i can rip it open and then suck me up i'm healing for the shit you're dealing dude could you imagine somebody saying that to you (laughs) yeah that would uh singing it to you I dig what's going on with the synths in this song. Like, there's some cool, yeah. boom, you know, that kind of stuff. I, yeah, lo- I love yeah. that stuff. Stuff that sounds like like you're boarding a UFO. There's, like, uh, this oscillating kind of beat that's happening off-tempo through the mid part of the song that's really interesting. And then, like, one of my favorite things is after the last verse, when it goes to the final section, there's this sort of drum fill, the engineer. He starts on the on the right side and then pans it hard left. So through each iteration, the fill pans to the left and then it pans back to the right. I think that's awesome. My dick is panning hard left <laughs> right now. <laughs> Away from you. <laughs> Well, thanks, Jeff. That was a fantastic song. I really, really dug it. It's uh, it's a very sexy sounding song for sure. Like even without hearing the lyrics or knowing what she's saying, like I feel like it just has that vibe. That's a mood setter for sure. Very sexy song. And it's my turn now. So to take us right into, I feel like the last couple of songs have been the slow dance, the build up to, and now we're we're gonna start getting at it. We're gonna start a little slow, but it is it is definitely a song that will provoke banging. And the song I'm talking about is an Isley Brothers tune from the spring of 1983 on their 22nd album, if you can believe that. In 1983, they'd done 22 records. Holy crap! I knew they were prolific, but good God. Yeah. And the uh, titular song on this album was comprised in response to Marvin Gaye's hit Sexual Healing, because they they felt like they needed something to answer that. And this song that we're about to listen to right now is Between the Sheets by the Isley Brothers. You could have a whole sex in the amount of time that song takes. I think I'm going to propose to my wife that we uh, try to have a session where we mirror the parts of that song. So we do the we do the foreplay to the beginning, <laughs> the bean and be between the sheets. And then like it's starting to pick up and so now we're banging. And then when it gets to the people be to people be to people be part, then we've really got to like hustle <laughs> to the end there and ooh ah and then <laughs> You know, let it rip. Yeah, it's interesting because <laughs> if you're only recognizing the song from the samples that you've seen pulled, this song's been sampled in over 160 songs, notably by Biggie Smalls in his infamous track, Big Papa. He uses multiple samples from the track throughout. There's also a remix of a tribe called Quest Song called Bonita Applebaum. Anyway, the song really starts to stand tall in the bridge. After that third verse, Ronald Isley says, enough of this singing, let's make love. And it's just like, (laughs) from there, (laughs) there's not much left of the imagination. It kind of sounds like an 80s movie montage in that part. Like best of the best, like dee doo doo bee dee boo 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 dee boo dee boo dee, you know <laughs> the grunting and then all the double entendre of like I'm coming on strong, <laughs> but uh, it all continues through the outro, which it just starts for me. It starts to get a little awkward, like if you're not actually doing the deed as well, like staring at you guys while we listen to that was a different different experience for me. It was going on for a while. <laughs> 
it's lengthy. It's a, a meaty song, a girthy song. Anyway, the, the titular song off of this record, which did come out in 1983 in the spring, right when all the animals are starting to get that spring fever and, and boners be popping. And the album peaked at 19 on the Billboard 200 and then number three on the R&B charts. That's my warm-up song. So like, if you are able to go further than that song, like by the time you get to my next song, you should be you should be feeling feeling pretty good, pretty good. And this is going to be one that's really going to let you start to to really give it to each other. Just like, yeah, you're you're in it. And uh, this is a song that was produced by notorious hip hop producer Timberland. And the song is Pony by Genuine. What do you think that? Sound. I mean, it's so distinctive, and it's only something from this song. Like as soon as you hear that, bleh, 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 yeah, you're yeah. Like what? It's just so. Is it supposed to be something, or is it just a sound that he thought sounded cool, and he was like, "I can make a beat out of this." I'm Timbaland. Yeah. No. So the story goes that he had this old tech player or whatever, and found a sound that he liked. He was like, it sounds like a frog. <laughs> it's just like... It does sound like a frog. He like heard it and was like, cool, this is what I'm doing. And that part of the song was the beat that he'd made, and he actually made it for a different group. A little background on Genuine. He started off as part of like a collective called the Swing Mob. Timberland and Missy Elliott was in it as well. It's Timberland. Timberland. Timber, Timberland? Dude. No, it's not. Timberland. It's Timberland. Timberland and Missy Elliott are in this group with him. And uh, they all just kind of work together and stuff. And it's interesting because this song was actually released in 1996, but he had written it years and years before because the, the dude who was running the collective was trying to get a massive record contract for all of the 15 artists under his purview. But the labels kept saying, we want these three. We want Missy. We want genuine and we want Timbaland and he's like no you get all or none and so they all could have had a record contract a lot earlier than than they actually got because it didn't ever happen for that guy and then they all just sort of disbanded another interesting thing that does make me think about fucking <laughs> <laughs> this is a song about getting fucked by the record company <laughs> so this song kind of like is a very sexy song and it is about getting down and getting after it and yeah it's got a really good sort of rhythm to it that it's just like it feels like we're very if we're looking at the movie and actually this is used in a lot of movies came back into the public eye via the cinema of magic mike and that trilogy of of films oh yeah i remember that that scene do you think that anybody has ever actually worn a saddle during <laughs> sex in any form or fashion? I saw an HBO show real about question. that. Yeah, actually, there was a real sex episode that I watched when I was babysitting. Really? So they wear saddles and bang? And they, like, dress up with, they have, like, little clopper, you know, hoof hands, and they, it's called <laughs> yes. pony play, you know? <laughs> and they wear saddles and ride pony. each other around. It's, uh... <laughs> clap, 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 clap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so hot. Uh, you know, like they have the reins. And the, I love your mane. Could I put a bridle on you? And just clap, 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 clap. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the uh, the one that, that you really get down to. And that's my hard thrusting song out of the two. Very nice. Jeff, we're going back to you. These artists, this band that I've chosen, worked with Timbaland at some point. So there's a direct connection. Yeah. I don't think that they're very well known, but they've worked with a lot of interesting people like Shirley Manson. Unfortunately, they were signed by Limp Biscuit at some point. One of them played in the band Crazy Town. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. Yeah, totally. And I don't even remember where I heard this song for the first time, but I was like, this song fucks. This is a hard fucking song right here. Lyrically, musically. So I didn't want to choose Closer by Nine Inch Nails because it's just so obvious, I sure. guess. If you had to make a playlist that's like the Closer banging playlist, then I think this song is on yeah. that. Closer's on the Mount Rushmore of bang songs. 
exactly it's like the premiere bang song and it's so on the nose as it were but yeah this is she wants revenge tear you apart from 2006 I'll say just throwing in the uh, closer category, kind of that monotone, almost like devoid of emotion. And then like the things that are being said and then the tear you apart. I mean, it, it does have that violent slant to it. And then I feel like that's just a creepy song. Is it not? Oh, you're not getting like super creep from this. No, I get more like it's lustful energy and it's reciprocated, which is made clear by the lyrics because the guy is crushing on the on the girl and then the girl lets it be known to the guy on the dance floor that she's into him too and then now they're gonna bang it out there's nothing wrong with like a a little bit of aggression if it's reciprocated that's all right and that's the way i think of it it's just an an aggressive sesh that and that's cool Hard fucking when both people want to do it. That's all good. There's just, I don't know, there's these darker things that are hiding there that I thought. Yeah, there's a touch of danger in it. But it, to me, it's like a, like the way a vampire is dangerous. Like it's kind of like hot danger and not okay, not like rapey danger. Yeah, okay. You know? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, Trent Reznor's singing, I want to fuck you like an animal. My situation, we're both Nine Inch Nails fans. That's something that gets us going. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> we have to turn on the like, sound machine. It's just like keep there being a lot of noise in the in the room while it's happening now that the, the children are of listening age and understanding age. So you just have whooshing waves going while... <laughs> whoosh. No, it's just like white noise. It's like the Twilight Zone. Why don't you just play music? Well, I, yeah, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We're also in the sound machine stage sometimes, so I get it. Well, so the other bit is that Grandma lives with us. My wife's mom lives with us. Oh yeah, and she's a little bit of a night owl. So kids may be in bed. She just got a cup up against the door. <laughs> <laughs> just... Mom, <laughs> y'all okay in there? I can hear you, Mom. <laughs> Everything all right? <laughs> like you get me closer to God. <laughs> That's a little bit of a tougher one to do, but anytime we're in a hotel, <laughs> look out! Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. I didn't want to just choose. One like closer. Yeah. Or, they also have a sound that's kind of like placebo, who I like, whose songs also fuck. Yeah. Didn't they open for them on a tour? Did I read that right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. So you can see that there's a, a kinship between those things. But yeah, the song fucking jams, dude. It makes you want to bang. It's all good. Bang like an animal. And, you know, whilst appreciating consensuality and tenderness. Yeah. Always have a safe word if it's going to get rough, you know. Bring us home with a real touching and nonviolent hard banging song, Russ. So my song is a very sensual and loving song. It's called Louise by No Effects off their 2000 album, Pump Up the Volume. Well, that's a funny name. Nice. <laughs> it might be the most graphic song I've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. Well, and I and I do like to I do like to use my little pedestal to bring out songs like that. For instance, this song has zero subtext, which I thought would be perfect for you. There's nothing that you know you don't <laughs> yeah. understand. That's true. Yeah, I understand yeah. exactly what he's saying. <laughs> All right, so love them or hate them, no effects has laid the groundwork for so many punk bands, whether it be influencing them or. Fat Mike giving bands a shot by signing them to his record label, Fat Records. He's done a lot for the punk side of the music business. Louise is not my favorite No Effects song by any means, but if we're taking off the gloves for a song about fucking that fucks, then this fucking fuck song fucking fucks hard. Okay. Let's see what you did there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> we got a dom and a sub, both women. And it's a filthy song, but in the best way. We've got fucking sucking dildos, front and back, remote control vibrators, crops, pierced labia secured with luggage locks, and piss drinking. 
though that doesn't cover everything. And the song is only a minute, 50 seconds. It's a real quickie. Yeah, it is. I mean, like, nobody's actually fucking to the song, I don't think. <laughs> it depends. If you need to knock one out in a minute 50, yeah, I could see it happening. Yeah. Yeah, why not? It's like Thanksgiving, turkey's coming out in 10 minutes. Like, let's go. <laughs> but it's not a sexy song by any means. <laughs> that song is not sexy. In your opinion, I guess. <laughs> Treat my clit like bubble gum. I mean, it's right. Hello. I already do that. <laughs> you are a very considerate lover, and I and I appreciate that. Yeah, I treat your clit like yeah. bubble gum. His ass clit is the mm-hmm. best. An ass clit? I haven't heard of that. That's a thing, huh? Is that what the kids are doing these days? <laughs> it's just a dingleberry <laughs> or something, right? Yeah. Oh, man, my wife one time told this joke. She's like, what do you call it when women have dingleberries from their period blood i said i don't know honey what what could they ever call that I said cranberries <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's funny yeah and true anyway <laughs> what were you saying Russ? no effects is actually retiring they're not breaking up but they're just retiring and they're currently on their farewell tour so they're going out celebrating 40 years with 40 final shows in 40 cities playing 40 songs per day. Jeez. Which it's cool. And then they they came to Dallas, right? They didn't make it to Austin or Houston or anything, but they they went to Dallas on the same day that Dave came over to hang out. And so I did not go to that show because we had plans. And I've been second guessing that decision forever. Well, shit. Yeah. No. I think you should have, you should second guess that. That was a terrible decision to hang out with me when you could have been watching No Effects. If I'd have known No Effects was going to be there that same day, I wouldn't have volunteered us to come over and hang out. No, the truth is, I did not realize that it was a farewell tour. Right on. I think that was a, a really, really fun song. I do love kind of the tongue in cheek nature of, of No Effects. I, I think that they are punk rock royalty. But uh, yeah, that that guitar scrape at the beginning, (laughs) it's just like, yeah, it's like, man, Bowling for Soup is going to hear this and they're going to they're going to copy you. This is literally the first time I've ever heard that song. And I immediately started laughing and I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the harmony at the end, too. That was fun. And uh, probably I can't imagine a situation where I would ever listen to it again. (laughs) But uh, I I did enjoy that time. (laughs) Certainly not while I'm trying to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for uh, taking us out on a high note, ending us with a bang there, Russ. It's been fun. Think about if you made a playlist of these six songs. Like, it, it, it was such a to? weird blend of things. <laughs> yeah. that It's like, if I feel like anybody could find a song on here to bang to, but to try to bang to all of them <laughs> would be n- nigh impossible, right? right. Because it's just... Like your partner would just be like, too many genres. Okay, Where are we I can't going? get in the groove of this. Yeah, we we have the Isley Brothers playing an eighty synth and groaning, and then we have dildo sticking in two holes in this other song, and then we got fucking tearing people apart. It's just there's a lot going on. It's a lot to unpack, <laughs> which is kind of why. I yeah, was, and then a yeah. frog, a frog beat. Boop. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're gonna make if you, I guess a pro tip on making a banging playlist is that you want it all to be the same tempo, like because you can't you can't oh. go from 80 BPM to like 160. You need to try to match it some. Yeah, good recommendation. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Frog beats. Well, that's going to do it for today here in the Six Picks Music Clubhouse. Thanks for hanging out with us and hearing all of our baby making talk. Sorry, Mom. Anyway, links to the Spotify playlist to listen to all of the songs from today in their entirety is in the show notes. If you liked it, like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all of our shenanigans. And shoot us an email or make a comment or whatever and let us know what your bang song is and why. And maybe we'll feature it on the show. Until the next time, y'all play it loud and keep jamming. This episode of Six Picks Music Club was produced by Stu Padasso. Edited by Sir Cole Jerkin. 
with special thanks to Dixie Wrecked. Wait, so he's a knight? Yeah, I guess. Sir Cole Jerkin. Yeah, Cole Jerkin. <laughs> Cole Jerkin got knighted. <laughs>